Now we come to Hello. the after um, a strong uh, first session, obstructive sleep apnea, obesity, and sympathetic activity. Now we come to we, now we are ready for uh, more stronger. The second session is hypertension related circadian dysfunction. I have with me uh, Dr. Enrico Rossi, the speaker and chairman. Uh, Professor Hani Ragi, Professor Shawaranin, and waiting for Dr. Hazem Khamis is coming. Uh, we'll start by Enrico who has two uh, lectures. The first lecture is, uh, in the, is a question coming from uh, a Minister of Health, past Minister of Health, Dr. Fuad El Nawawi, with us. Thank you, Dr. Fuad, that you join us. He is uh, asking a question to uh, Dr. Hanaz Zawawi, which is the speaker about interaction between COVID-19 and cardiovascular risk factors. And I said that you are having the answer in 15 minutes, and then we'll discuss with you <laughs> 10 minutes for this. So uh, Enrico Rossi, uh, let's start. Okay. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Can you see my slide? I hope so. Yes, yes, we see. Okay. Um, so uh, the um, unprecedented ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has caused uh, uh, really dramatic consequences. Uh, uh, as of today, the number of people infected uh, are about uh, 100 25 millions worldwide. And uh, deaths have been about uh, 2,800,000 worldwide. 105,000 people died in Italy. So this is really a dramatic situation. And uh, among causes of death, very important and certainly those related to the impairment of the cardiovascular system. Uh, certainly the hi hyperinflammation induces uh, inflammation of endothelial cells, pericytes, pneumocytes, myocardial cells. And this causes uh, microvascular and microvascular endothelial dysfunction. This uh, may increase the inflammation and activate uh, a dysregulation of the immune system with infiltration of macrophages in the myocardium that may cause fulminant myocarditis. In any case, myocardial damage that may cause uh, uh, ventricular dysfunction in heart failures, arrhythmias, and inflammation and the cytokine storm of reproduction of interleukin 6, 7, 22, and others may cause also plaque instability, rupture uh, in acute coronary syndrome. Well, uh, since the beginning, from the end of uh, 2019, when the pandemic started in China, the um, disease associated with uh, a poor uh, outcome uh, in uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, infection were looked for. And uh, as you can see here from probably one of the first study, uh, the presence uh, of uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, uh, um, and also of uh, cardiovascular complication of these uh, risk factors. Uh, including also an increase of age, was uh, responsible uh, in a, a much greater percentage of uh, uh, a fatal outcome. Those no, non-survived non to the infectious disease uh, had uh, with uh, uh, greater prevalence uh, uh, hypertension, diabetes, and this uh, associated uh, or disease or complications. And the same was observed in uh, um, intensive care units uh, in Lombardy, in our region, in Italy, that uh, uh, had uh, uh, a very heavy spread uh, of the infection. Again, comorbidities, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, uh, diabetes, uh, uh, heart disease, uh, chronic kidney disease, and so on, were more frequent in those who died in the intensive care unit uh, and also in those who died in hospital. Um, 
in a study performed by a group of the Italian Society of Hypertension who looked at, at subjects uh, in a unit that had also hypertension clinics. They observed in uh, almost 1,600 uh, patients that uh, hypertension was present uh, in high percentage of cases, about 55%, and also obesity and diabetes. However, as far as hypertension is concerned, the prevalence of hypertension by age was very similar to the prevalence observed in a general population of hypertensive patients uh, evaluated during the World Hypertension Day in Italy. So there was a confounding by age in this uh, uh, high prevalence. And in fact, uh, looking at logistic regression analysis uh, in the non survivor groups, hypertension resulted non significant. And in general, those who were significant were diabetes. Uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, chronic kidney disease. But very important is the fact that the greater the number of comorbidities as evaluated by the Charlson index, uh, the greater is the proportion of non survivors. So the conclusion was that age and uh, comorbidities uh, may be responsible of the poor outcome in these patients. Now let's go back to China. And uh, in a study, in a retrospective observational study uh, of patients uh, uh, with COVID-19 in this hospital, the Shan Hospital was dedicated to the uh, coronavirus infection in uh, Wuhan. In uh, 850 patients with a history of hypertension, well, the presence of uh, hypertension uh, increased about twofold the relative risk of mortality. And at the same time, the greater risk was for those without antihypertensive treatment, hypertensive, but without treatment. And finally, also the possible interference of RAS blockers was evaluated. There was a small difference that was not significant. And these data are reported here. Those with hypertension and less survival, and particularly those without antihypertensive treatment. A small difference between uh, uh, those with or without RAS blockers, but this was not statistically significant. So, in conclusion, uh, this data indicates that uh, hypertension uh, is, uh, shows a high prevalence in uh, uh, patients uh, uh, with uh, COVID-19 infection, and uh, is associated perhaps with a greater severity. But uh, this is the, probably the consequence of complication of organ damage due to hypertension of, or, uh, of associated risk factors that are so frequent in hypertension, because uh, uh, the, 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 the um, effect of high blood pressure per se, independent of the confounders of this complication and of age, did not result uh, significantly linked. And also uh, some uh, impairment in uh, inflammatory or immunological mechanism that uh, exists in hypertension. Hypertension is a state of low-grade inflammation. It is still not demonstrated. So complication of hypertension associated risk factor are quite important in uh, uh, determining uh, the outcome in these patients. There is the story of the um, RAS blockers that uh, uh, certainly may have some effect because as you well know, the um, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 is uh, the receptor of the spike of the virus that facilitated the entry of the virus into the cell. So there was the fear that uh, uh, treatment with these drugs may increase the possibility of uh, uh, infection and also the severity of the infection. Uh, several observational studies, one of the most important is uh, uh, published uh, uh, in the England Journal of Medicine by Giuseppe Mancia and Giovanni Corraut that uh, evaluate a, a large database uh, 
in the region of Lombardy. Uh, and uh, in this case control study, more than 6,000 case patients with uh, uh, COVID-19 were matched with uh, more than 30,000 uh, controls that uh, were measured for sex, age, and also municipality of residence. And this study demonstrated that those who use the RAS blockers uh, did not show a different uh, odd ratio uh, in comparison with other antihypertensive drugs in several subgroups of uh, uh, this population, those uh, with uh, COVID infection, uh, uh, mild to moderate or critical or fatal, according to sex and age at diagnosis less or uh, higher than 60 years. So no evident uh, uh, responsibility of these drugs for infection and severity of infection. This was confirmed by several other observational population studies. All these studies were observational. What we really need is, of course, randomized clinical trial. We have only one uh, randomized clinical trial published concerning this topic. And this uh, study, the so-called BRACE Corona study that was presented at uh, the last meeting, the virtual meeting of the European Society of Cardiology and then published early this year, had the purpose of evaluating whether uh, discontinuation compared with a continuation of angiotensin converting enzyme or angiotensin receptor blockers may change the number of days alive and out of hospital through 30 days in patient hospitalized with mild to moderate coronavirus disease. And uh, this study found that uh, uh, the um, mean number of days alive and out of the hospital for those assigned to discontinue versus continuing this medication was very similar. A difference was very small and was not statistically significant. And therefore, the finding do not support routinely discontinuing RAS blockers among patients hospitalized with mild to moderate COVID-19. This was the conclusion. We need perhaps more studies, but I think altogether this data demonstrated that uh, uh, at present time, these drugs should not be discontinued. This is a demonstration that the line uh, uh, indicating the number of subjects alive out of the hospital versus time from randomization was absolutely uh, similar, almost superimposable between, between those that continued or discontinued the use of RAS blockers. So we may say that uh, hypertension is certainly one of the most common risk associated comorbidities, but this uh, association is confounded by age and cardiovascular damage. It is essential that hypertension remains well controlled and there is no evidence that ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers are uh, associated with a worse prognosis and patients should not discontinue the use of this medication. Another interesting point is uh, the association between statin used and mortality in hospitalized patients with COVID-19. Um, as I said before, this uh, disease, COVID-19, uh, may result in a hyperinflammation state. And the statins are known to have anti-inflammatory properties, also anti-thrombotic properties. And in this uh, retrospective analysis of patients admitted with COVID-19, uh, uh, considering as the primary endpoint uh, in hospital mortality within 30 days, was found that among uh, about uh, 1,300 patients, um, half with statin and half uh, without statin treatment, statin use was significantly associated with lower odds of the primary endpoint 
uh, and uh, the conclusion was antecedent to stating use in patients hospitalized with COVID-19 is associated with lower inpatient mortality. This is an interesting observation that confirmed previous observation. But I have to say that other studies have not found this association, this link. So certainly more studies are needed, particularly prospective randomized control studies, if possible. Otherwise, we cannot exclude that this association was only by chance. However, I think this is an interesting uh, topic that uh, deserves further uh, evaluation. Obviously, diabetes represents a, a very important uh, risk factors, cardiovascular risk factor, that uh, uh, is associated to greater severity of uh, COVID-19 and a greater number of complications. There are several studies that have demonstrated this association. I am reporting here the results of a study performed in uh, England uh, with uh, the purpose to uh, evaluate also the issue of not only type 2 diabetes, but also type 1 diabetes. Well, in a very large population uh, admitted to the hospital, uh, the in-hospital uh, COVID-19 related deaths uh, were in 20, about 24,000 subjects. And of this, uh, a third, third occurred in people with diabetes. And after adjustment for several confounders, the odd ratio for death due to COVID-19 in people with type 1 diabetes was 3.5. And it was about 2 in those with type 2 diabetes. So, the results of this uh, large analysis in England show that type 1, type 2 diabetes were both independently associated with a, a significant increase odds of in-hospital death for COVID-19. And you can see here, and, uh, and there is also the influence of age, but for several groups, subgroups according to age, type 1, type 2 diabetes were very important in uh, uh, being a cause of death in this population. And in the same issue of Lancet and the same group also demonstrate that increased COVID-19 related mortality was associated not only with cardiovascular and renal complications, but independently also with glycemic control and body mass index. So even for diabetes, glycemic control is very important. It is very important for hypertension, probably it is very important for hypercholesterolemia. But also body mass index was included. And we know very well that obesity is a potent risk factor for severe COVID-19 infection through several mechanisms that include a reduction of respiratory efficiency or performance, the increase in blood pressure, the frequent association with diabetes, the greater thrombogenic potential, and all these causes may reduce cardiorespiratory fitness and increase cardiovascular susceptibility to uh, immune-driven uh, vascular effect and thrombotic effects. On the uh, other hand, also there is regulation uh, that is frequently linked to uh, adiposity, dysregulation of the immune system, and also a higher viral shedding and load in breath may uh, induce uh, greater viral exposure and dysfunctional immune response and hence induce a greater severity from COVID-19 infection. Certainly, lifestyle risk factors uh, may be also associated to um, COVID-19. In this community-based cohort study 
of about uh, uh, 388,000 adults in UK, you can see that uh, those uh, uh, were smokers with uh, uh, no physical activity, uh, greater alcohol consumption, a high uh, body mass index with obesity had all a, a, a greater chance of, of being hospitalized for COVID-19. And uh, the disease, sorry. The disease also induces a, a great health impacts. Also, mental health may be compromised. And in another study in Australia, the association between psychological distress and changes in health behavior was evaluated through an online survey. And you can see that depression, anxiety, and stress related probably to uh, social isolation, uh, to, to, to being a, a recluse at home, uh, may uh, be associated to negative changes in uh, uh, lifestyles, uh, in physical activity, uh, com may compromise sleep, uh, may increase smoking habit and alcohol drinking. So uh, poor lifestyle is a cause of greater susceptibility to hospitalization for the infection and at the same time the pandemic has increased psychological distress and has uh, worsened the lifestyle in these patients. And a meta-analysis that have looked at cardiovascular risk profile was recently published. This included more than 77,000 hospitalized patients. And at the end, the predictors of case fatality rate at meta-regression analysis were age, cardiovascular comorbidity, risk factors, and cardiovascular complications. A meta-regression analysis have demonstrated that pre-existing cardiovascular comorbidity and risk factors were significantly associated to cardiovascular complications in this population of COVID-19 patients. So patients should maintain an appropriate lifestyle habit and have to avoid any discontinuation of their medication. This may be not easy. Recently, um, a task force of the European Society of Hypertension has published the results of a survey conducted among uh, 52 excellence centers in the European Society of Hypertension. And uh, uh, this survey demonstrated that uh, during the shutdown due to COVID-19, the uh, number of patients that uh, were followed at, uh, in the outpatients clinic uh, were uh, drastically reduced by 90%. And uh, more than 60% of patients had declared uh, difficulty to uh, have contact with uh, their doctors. And some patients also stopped uh, uh, RAS blockers and uh, there was difficulty in performing ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. So all these uh, uh, consequences of the shutdown may make very difficult the follow-up of patients with uh, risk factors that uh, should uh, be admitted in this uh, outpatient clinic. And uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Rossica. I have an observation when starting the COVID-19, this is a, a terminology called the high risk population. And uh, regarding this high risk population, hypertension on the top, and the mortality from hypertension patient is more than COPD, which is astonishing. I don't know why. Hypertension, maybe diabetes, and then COPD. But in, in a sense, it should see COPD at the top of the list for mortality, but doesn't happen. How, do you have an explanation for this? Well, uh, well um, uh, you, you are referring to the prevalence 
of hypertension in these patients, but uh, not hypertension per se may be considered the cause of the poor outcome of these patients. Probably the complications of hypertension is the cause. In other words, this uh, um, relation is confounded by age. Uh, more patients with uh, a poor outcome of COVID-19 had hypertension, but this was also because they were uh, older. And therefore, since in the elderly, the prevalence of hypertension is very high, there is hypertension, but this does not mean that hypertension per se is the cause of the uh, uh, fatal event. Uh, hypertension has a very important role when is uh, has induced uh, a, a, a complication or when it is associated by other risk factors such as diabetes. The same is for the diabetes. So uh, um, is this observation of prevalence of risk factors does not mean that they are uh, in any case the cause of the poor outcome. But you, you are right, COPD is also uh, obviously very important since this is uh, a, an interstitial pneumonia, at least at the beginning. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, blood pressure should be controlled. And the message is that is uh, an important risk factor that may become one of the causes, or perhaps the most important cause in the poor outcome if it is not well treated, if it induces some complication, cardiac or renal complications, or cerebral complications. Okay, thank you, Enrico. I'm Atif El Bahari. Uh, yes. On the basis of uh, the angiotensin receptor blockers and the ACE inhibitors, they, we don't find any uh, interference with the infection here in the COVID-19. But on the basis of the anti-inflammatory of both drugs, which you prefer? Um, for reducing inflammation, uh, you mean among uh, anti-hypertensive drugs? Or, uh, or in general? For ACE inhibitors, uh, because we know it has a pretty kind of effect and have an anti-inflammatory effect. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Well, blockers. certainly the RAS blockers may have some anti-inflammatory effects and uh, this could be potentiated by statins. Uh, as uh, I have uh, uh, shown, uh, some data are in this direction. However, uh, I, I want to repeat that uh, for this, uh, the evidence uh, is not strong and we need many more studies. But uh, in principle, theoretically, also statin have some uh, anti-inflammatory effects and this maybe could be useful in this context. However, uh, I think that uh, we need many more data in this uh, context. Thank as you. far as RAS blockers are concerned, they certainly do not seem to worsen the disease. They may even improve the disease. We have some uh, um, experimental data and uh, in some subgroups evaluated in observational studies that may suggest that RAS blockers, particularly angiotensin receptor blockers, may help in uh, this disease. However, uh, we really need, uh, um, if possible, uh, uh, prospective randomized trials for demonstrating this. We have no demonstration. Some of, some of these studies probably are uh, uh, ongoing. I don't know if they will be ended and uh, will give uh, uh, definite results. Okay, grazie. Thank you very much, Professor Rossi. My name is Hany Raghi. I'm uh, from the National Heart Institute. This was Thank a you. wonderful presentation. My question you. to you is what can we learn in Egypt from the European Society of Hypertension um, in facing something that we have never faced before? Our patients stopped going to the doctors. They also stopped exercising. And many of them have put on uh, large amounts of weight during the COVID epidemic. They're sitting at home, they're eating, they're not exercising. Many of them have stopped taking ACE inhibitors, ARBs, because their children read something on Facebook. 
and uh, they could not get through to their... Uh, so in the world, in the new practice we are facing of virtual cardiology, how can we perform, at least for a while, till people get vaccinated, how can we perform virtu virtual blood pressure clinics? How can we perform virtual lifestyle? I mean, I want, I'm very curious if the ESH has actually put any uh, guidelines or any advice or a position statement on, uh, because people can measure their blood pressure at home. It's not something, yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, they're not doing, you know, so, uh, and it's quite reliable, you know, so how can <laughs> yes. we teach people and how can we manage? What's your advice to us? Well, um, certainly, uh, this uh, mm, uh, uh, event uh, and the consequence uh, that uh, you have described uh, was uh, evaluated by the society. And uh, in fact, uh, even in these excellent centers, there have been a uh, uh, lot of problems in uh, following up the uh, patients that usually uh, were, were admitted in this outpatient clinic. And the consequences that you have so well described are there. Uh, mm, we uh, certainly have the um, duty of uh, inform uh, of this phenomenon because uh, uh, at the same time when this pandemic is killing people, we risk also that other people with uh, severe disease, non-communicable diseases may worsen their status and add problems to problems. As far as uh, specifically the point uh, of hypertensive patients, I think that uh, a great role may have the so-called telemedicine, which is uh, the possibility of following patients uh, also virtually, but using uh, uh, the um, possibility that uh, uh, technological improvement can offer us. You have uh, mentioned uh, home blood pressure uh, measurement, and this is certainly one of the most important points. But uh, the face-to-face uh, -face communication with the patients uh, using uh, uh, the um, possibility that the technology uh, of, uh, offers us uh, is very important. There may be some discussion, some advice, and this is a point uh, that uh, is uh, uh, going to be more and more used. After all, uh, also individually, with our patients, we have had contact with messages, with phone call and so on. The point is to organize better this relation with the patients. I think this is possible. And this may be useful in preventing all the abnormal lifestyle changes that may follow this situation. But uh, we hope that the situation may be may go into an improvement, uh, uh, not to lock down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, you said that hypertension patients with COVID hype, uh, should be treated and should be controlled. So, if the hypertensive patient, his blood pressure is very well controlled, particularly from uh, even from the start of the affection by COVID. This does this guarantee that he will be protected and the uh, uh, morbidity and uh, mortality will be less? Because I myself uh, didn't notice that. Many hypertensive patients, very well controlled, with very few other risk factors, only uh, age. And in spite of that, the uh, 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 risk is high for uh, mortality. Um, sorry, I, I could not hear very well. Your question is uh, whether a treatment may protect these patients, uh, I understood. And um, yes, this is, uh, apparently this is the case. Uh, although we don't have uh, uh, many information on this, I think it would be also very important to uh, evaluate, for instance, uh, 
uh, how is the adherence uh, in these patients uh, during uh, uh, COVID, during particularly during the shutdown, for those uh, who were not in contact uh, with their doctors? Uh, however, what we can um, take from observational studies indicate that uh, treating um, patients uh, up to target uh, may help in reducing some complication. And this is apparently true for hypertension, but also for diabetes, also for hypercholesterolemia, and also for the other uh, uh, risk factor associated to wrong lifestyles. Um, we don't have definite demonstration, but uh, this is very reasonable that it should be in this way. But we may have in the future uh, some data on this, uh, looking, for instance, uh, on the difference between those who were adherent to treatment and those who were non-adherent. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Actually, you are privileged to have a second talk by Dr. Rossi uh, ah. about microcirculation hypertension. Dr. Rossi, please. Okay. So <laughs> we completely changed the topic. <laughs> This is a more pathophysiological and uh, hopefully also clinical. And uh, is related to a very important part of the circulation that uh, so far has not been uh, so intensively considered or evaluated because of the problems of a proper assessment. In fact, microcirculation, as the word says, is concerning the more distal part of the circulation, small vessels, starting from a vessel with a luminal diameter of less uh, of approximately 300 to 350 uh, micrometers, microns. So very small, one third of millimeter, and then down to uh, capillaries and uh, arterioles and so on. This is a, a very important part of the circulation. In fact, as you know, uh, the hallmark of uh, established hypertension is uh, an increase in peripheral resistance. And uh, the drop in pressure occurs at the level of the microcirculation, is the point where the resistance to flow increase. And this include the uh, small arteries, Sorry, arterioles. Sorry, don't see your screen. Can you share your screen first? You, Sorry? You, you slide, you stop the first one and then you go with the second one. Be sure you scream. <laughs> 